episode 14 knockoff podcast coming at you. It's called, we're going to rename this one the, uh, the fucking quickfire podcast. <laughs> Reason being, <laughs> fuck, I fucked up. We did just did the best fucking two, UFC 205 <laughs> breakdown you'll ever hear leading into this. ESPN, Chael Sonnen, uh, all of them didn't have anything on how we just, the fire that we our just phone spat. Have, our phone would have been running it really Seriously, that, like, that, that would have blown up, but I fucked up and uh, I set up the recording gear wrong. Yeah. Da- Danny's not here, he's in, uh, he's in Colombia and he's uh, he, young Daniel. Like, <laughs> he's the uh, Jamie Vernon of the, uh, yeah, of the knockoff, the he, kills it, he kills it with all the gear. Setting it all and, up. Uh, and I've uh, got... Uh, hopefully this is recording though because we're, we're planning on uh, on breaking down this 205 card and, and just rattling through it. That's um, right. We won't go into too much detail. But, yeah, we um, won't, won't, yeah, we'll won't touch on too much detail because we've just been talking about it for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not have to repeat it all. It'll all be repeated anyway. But, Absolutely uh, fucking that's shattered, classic. Yeah, That's classic. Fucking hell. We, yeah, can't be helped. You, just you, missed, you, missed you our Grand Slam home run. Yeah. Struck out. That's it, man. We would have had... had like sponsors waving tens of grand, tens of thousands of dollars at us, but <laughs> yeah. it's okay, man. Don't, well, feel, yeah, we'll don't feel bad about it. We'll get up again, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. Uh, anyway, UFC 205 uh, for all, all you fight fans out there is just around the corner. Mm. Uh, th- this time next week, we'll be sitting down to watch uh, what on paper is the fucking best card of all time. Yeah. It, uh, it, it's right up there just with the cu- current stars and marketability. They've got uh, three title fights on this mm. card coming up. Chris and I are going to go on record here and have a little uh, little tournament against each other. Put our fight picks on there. Who's going to win some of these fights and why? Mm. Uh, we've gone uh, straight off the top. Uh, we'll touch on each fight briefly. Uh, t- Tim Kennedy, Rashad Evans. Uh, I've gone. Uh, I've gone Rashad, and uh, Chris is on uh, Tim Kennedy. Yeah, exactly, man. I think that um, even Tim Kennedy sort of like lay off from the octagon. He's the sort of guy who keeps such insane fitness outside of the, the cage that I think he'll he'll come in in good nick. I think Rashad might be sort of oh, – oh, he definitely is on the twilight of his career, but very similar skill sets, you know, really, really evenly matched in that, you know, both guys can definitely have good crisp boxing, um, both really strong grapplers, strong in the clinch, great takedowns, you know, both a couple of – Big athletic eighty five is it's, it's going to be good. Amen. Next up on the next up on the uh, on the prelims, we've both gone Khabib Nurmagomedov, yeah. the Russian Eagle, mm. over uh, Michael the Menace Johnson. And we, we were saying it before, but but don't sleep on Michael Johnson. You know he, he's a, he's got he's got good you know high level wrestling credentials himself. And and I, I was saying it earlier on a on a different podcast, but I think if Khabib maintains his is <laughs> oh we got hey. uh, you know, Shion's going yeah, nuts yeah. here. Uh, yeah, right. Maintains his um, his uh, style as just that that one sided sort of press forwarded for the takedown style fighter. I think that guys will will catch up to that model like they did Charles Sonnen and stuff. I Mate, think that yeah. that'll become predictable. And that, that's definitely fair. It, mm-hmm. th- that said, I think the Russian Eagle is just going to get his title shot here mm-hmm. against the winner of uh, of this of this card's main event. Hard to argue with him, man. He's, he's, he's uh, I don't know his exact record, but 20, 20 plus professional fights undefeated. His his resume speaks for itself. I mean, he, he's definitely starting to fight some, and has fought some really high level dudes. Like he's fought Rafael de Sanos and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I, I definitely am picking picking Khabib as well. And another fight we we both agree on is that Frankie Edgar versus Jeremy Stevens fight. I think yeah, I think Frankie is. Uh... The best, one of the high level uh, guys in mixed martial arts, mm. even pound for pound, he's up there. He's up there for mine because one and well and truly, his fights at forty five now. He could get to thirty five if he wanted to. Yeah, and, and go and go Absolutely. compete down well down there. But um, and probably I'll, will. Yeah, realistically he, he speaking, could. before the before the end of his career, Definitely, I think because they'd give him a shot. Yeah, yeah, he, they would. That, be he, like he'd earn that. Mm. He's earned that. So I, I think uh, he's got. Got to look out for Jeremy Stevens' power, yeah. but I think uh, Frankie might be a little bit too crafty for him. And maybe a three-round three fight here too, which is rare for Frankie these days. He's yeah. a main event sort of guy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if he – I'm going to go Frankie by decision. We're, mm. we're both on record there, I think, with Frankie. Me too. Getting Me it too. And I, and I agree with you 100%. I think that Frankie is, is one of those guys that represents the – one of the most well-rounded guys in mixed martial arts. You know, he, he's the sort of guy that has just – Really slick stand up punches, kicks, you know, footwork, angles, takedowns, you know, good submissions. He's just the full package. And, Definitely. and he's cardio for days, fast as shit. Yeah, th- three rounds for him is, yeah. is going to be nothing. Yeah. I, I named my dog, who, um, as everyone probably is aware, after after that man, Frankie Edgar, is, 
is the shit. The and answer. that was back when um, back when the answer beat BJ Penn for um, the 55 pound title is when I got the dog and, um, and when I was like that buzzed on him that I was like, yeah, shit, man, I'm going to name I'm him. all about this guy. Yeah, That's yeah, amazing. this guy's legit. Yeah, uh, exactly. Both both agree that Misha Tate's going to bounce back to the winner's circle. Uh, I hope so. Lost her belt so. at 200, but he's back now, and I think she's going to be too classy for Raquel Pennington. I think she's probably just got a, a better all, all-round skill set, and that might mm. be a, a three-round decision as well. Exactly, and and, ha- and has more big fight experience, you know, and has yeah. been in there with, you know, with on when the, every all the chips have been on the table. So, you know, that, that'll definitely play to her advantage. I'd like, really like to see Misha come out and just stifle her, as Misha does best. You know, she's one of those people that... Sometimes turns up, sometimes seems to just, you know, struggle. But she always absolutely goes out on her sword. Like Misha, mm. Misha Tate fights are always good to watch. You know, they're, they're always definitely worth tuning in for. So here's war, one, war Misha. Here's one we, dis- uh, we disagree on. I've gone uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone fighting at welterweight again. Uh, I've gone Donald. Chris is on board Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that this is the first like I know that Rick Rick Story is up there with a you know as good a grapplers as as get get around but I think that Kelvin Gastelum is going to be a, a really different challenge for Cowboy I think that if he pressures him and he and he sort of pushes him back and and you know takes him down I think that he can control Cowboy but who knows man Cowboy of a late and especially a Cowboy at 70 is looking like a monster. Absolutely, he is. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be on board with uh, with the Cowboy. Do you, th- do you think he finishes him, or do you think it, it, it sort of sprays out into a, into a decision? He may, like he Could might. You can, you can catch him in a in a triangle Anything. or something. Donald's Anything. that crafty, yeah. really good, slick. We're just well rounded yeah. Cowboy these days. Uh, Absolutely, man. Absolutely. We're both on. Speaking of well rounded people, holy shit, Chris but, Chris Weidman. Speaking of the people that can do it all at a really high level. You know, there's there's the epitome of, of a guy who's got black belt submission skills, you know, wrestling credentials that are all American pedigree, stand up that can knock out Anderson Silva, um, you know, just the full package. So yeah, I think I think we'll see what Wyden walk away with that, and, and you seem to agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm on board Wyden. I think Yoel. Look, he's an out-and-out stud, but Chris Wyden getting to fight at MSG in his mm. own backyard after he was one of the poster boys for trying to really push. For the UFC to compete there, uh, I think he gets it done, and uh, I think he can finish Yoel. well. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I don't think it'll in mine anyway. I don't, I don't think it'll be an easy fight for either guy. No, I think it could be a, or an all-out war that sort of gets pushed into some later rounds, and, and both guys see a fair bit of damage out mm. of that. A three-rounder too. So I hope it encourages both guys to really go for it. That'd oh, be fucking yeah, of course, three rounds. Three rounder yeah. because it, the card's so fucking stacked. It's yeah, only like exactly. on the main card. Unbelievable. Yeah. And that, that'll favour Yoel too, mm. because I mean he he definitely have a, a disadvantage in the cardio to Chris Weidman, so three rounds will, will definitely suit him. Yeah, most but, definitely. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see both guys come out and throw fireworks there. Uh, Joanna, Joanna, champion versus Carolina. I think we both both agree that uh, jo- Joanna will get that done. I think she's yeah. t- just like t- tough as nails. I, I think she'll compete. After that fight, you go to the next one of Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Tyron Woodley. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's like the forgotten about fight forgotten on this about card. Fights is, is just it's, insane. Okay, another title fight. Uh, Wonderboy is a New Yorker as well. He's like, looked unstoppable. He's a uh, Wonderboy in, in his last, you know, how like many a, fights. A he's, fucking video game character. Yeah, man. yeah. His, his style is just so hard for everyone to figure out. It's sort of like that. That early Leota Machida when mm. he first came onto the scene, where everybody, no one knew how to fight him, and and people still haven't figured that out with no. Wonder Boy. So it'll be interesting to see how Tyron comes in. I'm on Wonder Boy. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that um, that he'll probably be just just keep Woodley too much at range, and, mm. and Woodley sort of has to explode in with those combinations. But um, could be Johnny Hendricks all over again. Yeah, versus Wonder Boy. Yeah, where he just got lit up like a mm. Christmas tree. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, definitely, man. I, I'm, I'm Wonder Boy there too, but I'd, I'd like to see Tyron Woodley beat him, you know. But um, that main event, holy shit, you know that that's that's the one that everyone's going to be talking about and and looking forward to. Anything that Conor McGregor's involved in always comes with fireworks. It's looking to become the first ever simultaneous two weight world mm, champion. Is, is that right? I yeah, think, I think yeah. it is. No, no, no. People no, have it, held two belts, but yeah. not alongside it, not at That's the same right. time. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Uh, yeah. Two weight world champion McGregor mm. here at fifty five, which I, I can't help but think. And I know Eddie Alvarez is tough as nails, and mm. my my uh, 
my heart says Eddie. I'd love to see Eddie get get his fairy tale, but I think Connor at, at fifty five, this really might be home for him. Oh, and, it um, is absolutely his best weight for yeah, sure. It is be, his, um, his weight. I just think he might be able to tag him early. If, Con- mm. if Con- Connor is to win for mine, I don't think he wins a five round decision against Eddie. No, I no. think uh, Eddie, Eddie that is hammer of a left hand early. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I, I think Connor's one of the best early round fighters in the, mm. in the UFC. He comes out, oh, definitely asserts his dominance sort of straight up in a fight. He likes to really let him know how mm. that left feels, and I think he might have potential to really, really tag Eddie yeah. if, uh, if Eddie's and, not careful. And Eddie is, is one of those guys that, that has known for in previous fights to get tagged early and to get rocked and mm. badly hurt and knocked down like he did in that Michael Chan, the fight, and just Frankie Edgar style, recover from adversity and, and come back and, mm. and gut through it. But when, when Conor McGregor lands that left hand, like, a lot of people don't get a second chance. Like, it, it puts people out. That's it's, right. it's a, he's a heavy hitter early, like you said. Um, I just think that Eddie Alvarez is going to be looking, and he's even come out in the interviews and, and sort of announced that he thinks that Conor McGregor is really just a left-handed fighter. Mm. So, I mean, he's going to be looking for that left hand. He's going to be looking to move, um, you know, as he's sort of done in those Rafael de Sanos and um, – and Gilbert Melendez fights, and I reckon he'll look to cut him off, clinch with him, mm. tire out his arms yeah, in between rounds. Really wear really him out. Wear him out. Take take that gas tank away from Connor. Get into that stage of when his hands down, big mm. deep breaths. You know, so he, he was fatigued in that Nate fight yeah, again, man. He one hundred percent. He did. Like, him and he ended went up getting, at him and yeah. Yeah. him down. And but all a, that se- sort a second of stuff. ended up getting sort of somewhat of a second wind and was able mm. to gut it out. But yeah. there was fatigue there. And if that uh, if Eddie's a it loves it on the ground. Uh, you got to, could wear Connor out. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Hart, yeah. Hart wants Eddie head. If I'm a betting man, I've got to go on record and say it's Conor McGregor. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm more pulling for Eddie because I, I, you know, obviously Conor McGregor sort of is one of those love him or hate him type fighters. But, um, but I, I legitimately feel as though Eddie, uh, Eddie Alvarez is, as I said on the the previous <laughs> previous recording, is the first person to really test uh, Conor as a high level wrestler since Chad Mendes, mm. you know, because he really hasn't had anybody that's... Like, Nate Diaz, yeah, sure, you tried to clinch with him, but Nate Diaz isn't even in the conversation of good wrestlers at 55. No, no, you did right. So, mm. with that said, it was... We did say it was going to be the fucking quick shotgun podcast. We've got the uh, the card coming up now that we're going to go and tune into. Yeah, so who do you pick for that one, Bruce? Look, I've got to go... Uh, I've got to go with Tony Ferguson. You, you, I just, you're you, on here, mate. I you, am, you, I you, am. You dig him. I have, yeah. I have for a while, too. I just like the uh, the skill set that he brings. Like, mm. a bit of an oddball with his personality, if I can, mm. don't get me wrong, but uh, each time he comes, it's an entertaining fight. Yeah, so, that's a high, high-level lightweight battle. RDA right? looking yeah. to bounce back after he lost his belt. So we're in for a treat here this afternoon. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've got uh, a few things in the works, too, which uh, which might be coming up over the next few weeks. So if I can stick with us. We'll keep putting shit out. Thanks for joining us, Chris. See who gets their picks. There we go. Yeah, come, t- tune in for the next one, and uh, we'll see who gets the fucking chockies. Yeah. All right. Peace out. Talk soon.